All right, now I know what you're thinking. Everyone loves their Starbucks and their Dunkin', but you know, sometimes you gotta just make it at home, save a couple bucks, whatever you gotta do here. This Mr. Coffee espresso machine, I have had this for I think three years now, and there might even be a slightly more updated version, but maybe that's all the better, just to show you that this thing has stood the test of time. So let me show you how I make my morning espresso, and I'll point out the features as we go here. So your espresso scooper thingy is actually two pieces. This is where the espresso goes, and then of course there's little holes there so the espresso can filter down through, right, like such, and then it would come out the bottom into your cup here. They are nice enough to include a little bit of a scooper right there, so we're gonna scoop a couple in there. I usually go with two, and then I tap it down very gently. There we go, and again, not too tough when you're pushing that down, otherwise the water will not be able to go through properly. Then it's gonna go up in here, and then we are going to twist it that way. This requires two hands, so, oh, actually maybe I can, ha <laughs> ha, got it with one hand, look at that. Boom. Okay, so this thing needs to be pointing out when it's good to go. Next, we're gonna stick our cup right under there which this also came with, which was pretty neat. Now it's time to add some water, and you can see there's different markings on there. I usually go all the way up to the four here, that way there's enough water to make the espresso, but then because I like to do a latte, we're also gonna use the rest of the water to steam some milk. So let's go ahead and fill that up. I prefer to use filtered water, you can do whatever you like. Boom, there we go, and I never worry there's a little bit too much because we'll just vent it out later. Top portion here unscrews, boom, this is where our water goes. Now it's important to note every couple months or so you're going to want to get some descaling solution to pour down in here and then basically run a cycle. That way it can clean out the insides of the machine. So then we'll screw that back on and we are just about ready to go. Make sure that's nice and tight. Then over here you've got two functions. You're either going to twist it forward to get to brew or you're going to twist it towards you to get to steam. So we're going to go to brew double check that we do in fact have our mug down there. Can't tell you how many times I have let this thing accidentally overflow or once or twice it happened where I didn't even put the mug under there. So make sure that mug's there. You'll get your little indicator light that says it is cooking. Boom, now we're gonna prepare the rest of our latte. In a separate mug, we're gonna go ahead and put some almond milk, just like so. I got my mustache mug, ha! I like almond milk, so that's what I use here. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you a little trick to use with this measuring cup here, it's pretty neat. Now in a separate cup, we're gonna prepare the rest of the drink. This is kinda like the foundation. So I like two Truvia in there, and then I also put a little bit of dark chocolate, that way it's not super sweet, but it's a little bit extra sweet. Then once we pour the hot coffee over this, it's gonna melt that all up. And we're actually gonna use our frother to kind of mix it up from there. All right, you can see we've got some progress coming. It actually comes out quite quickly. Uh, that usually takes maybe two or three minutes. So a lot of times what I like to do is get this started and then I'll take care of any dishes, anything that's going on in the sink. And it usually times up pretty perfectly. Just remember, don't let this thing overflow, of course. So right as it's getting full, actually right about there, boom. We'll go ahead and just turn it off. Brought that back to the center. All right, we'll let the thing do its thing. So now it is time to do the milk. So what I have found works best here is I'm going to loop this under like so, and I can actually fit, <laughs> I can fit a measuring cup right underneath it. That way I don't have to sit there and hold it. Some people really like to move it around and do all that kind of stuff. I'm not too concerned about it, so we're just gonna. Oh, You can hear it's kind of loud, but hey, you know, doing what we gotta do. All right, so let's give that a minute. All right, now listen to this part. You're gonna hear it start to pitch down. And when you start to hear that, that means that we are getting through the rest of the water. We are just about done. Usually, this thing will heat until it actually just stops, but you can also stick your hand on there. Yeah, that's quite hot. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And we're gonna take that out of there. All right, time to go ahead and pour our coffee in. I would pour that quite quickly. All right, and like I mentioned, I have a little bit of extra down in there. I got a little bit of dark chocolate, so I want to give that a moment just to kind of heat up, let it melt a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and mix it over there. All right, that should be plenty, and so now we're gonna mix it up, and this is actually our Zule kitchen frother here, which is actually a perfect companion. All right, and now as much as mixing up the chocolate, it also gives it kind of a nice texture. It's like a, just a little bit smoother as it goes down, very nice. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and mix the milk in there. Now, it generally will come out like that. I like to kind of dump a little bit of that extra foam on there. Oh, yeah. 
And there is our latte. Now, the portion size that I used for the water earlier, I said I fill it up to the fourth one there. That's what I use for a bigger mug like this. You can play around and figure out the sizing that works best. From here, all that's left to do is do our cleaning. So right here, we're gonna twist this, drop it down. You can see that the grounds are now thoroughly saturated. They've been used. So we're gonna flip that stopper up right here, bring this all the way over to the garbaggio. Give it a couple taps there. I know there are ways to like use the grounds for your garden or something like that, but you can get as crafty as you like. And then we'll just give that a little rinse. Usually I scrape it out too, or I you know hit it with the brush. Now remember that I said earlier that if we don't end up using all the water, we can just vent it later. This is what I mean. Now be careful with this. It is still hot in there. There's the heating mechanism somewhere in there. So we're gonna twist this just enough to break the seal. Oh, never mind. Okay, so I guess I did use most of the water there. If there's still water that remains in there because it's being heated, there's going to be a lot of steam built up. So you want to twist that slowly. Uh, there you can see a little bit of it coming out. Sometimes it will kind of depressurize very quickly and, and sort of like shoot out. Uh, steam, that is, not water. So just go slow when you're doing that part. Now the last little bit right here. Just take our little, little wand protector off. Okay. Now the best thing you can do right here, scrape the outside, but then get yourself one of these little straw cleaners, stick that down inside, give it a couple of those, <clears throat> boom. And I just stick it over here on a straw ready to dry. Lastly, we're gonna wet a little bit of a paper towel right here. I'll just come right back here to our steam wand. Make sure that we get that all nice and clean. Again, just a little bit of water will do. There we go. I'm sure you could use a uh, like a Clorox wipe or something like that if you felt so inclined. And that's pretty much it. Now, occasionally down in here, you might spill a little bit of coffee as it appears I did. Again, you could just use a paper towel, just a wet paper towel, or that part comes off too. And you can just soak it over here. Oh yeah. And there we go. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit more work, a little bit more cleanup. But you know, if you're especially if you're trying to be more of on a budget with your coffee, this is a great way to go. And personally, I think this is kind of like when you make your own food. Somehow it just tastes better when you know that you did the work for it. So highly recommend. I hope you found this helpful. I love this little espresso machine. Peace.